we think that advertising by invitation is better than advertising by force. And that's where TrueView has come from. So quick show of hands again. How many people have seen Skip Ad when they were watching their, their things? That is the TrueView product. And it gives people the actual choice. So I've said here that it's revolutionizing video advertising. And you might say, oh, well, you know, I wouldn't go that far. But when you think about it, it is. Because we're giving people the option to choose exactly which ones they don't want to watch and which ones they do. But not only that, we're allowing the advertiser the choice to only pay when somebody hasn't skipped their ad. And that's the revolutionary part of it. So there's two TrueView ad formats. There's one which is in-stream, which most people are probably aware of, um, a pre-roll, for example. So uh, you want to watch something on YouTube, and you get a, you get a little video, first of all. Five seconds in, you get the option to skip it, and then you get to go to your content. The other type, then, is in-display, uh, which is when you search for something on YouTube, uh, and you've got ads coming up on the right-hand side. They're true view as well. And while there isn't a skip function to them, the important thing is that a view on them is a, is a true view. Um, the person has either elected not to skip it, or the person has elected to actually watch it. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty, pretty engaged type of thing. So now we're back to our situation where all of this advertising not being watched. We've got watched, not watched. But with TrueView, we've got watched and paid. And then we've got not watched and not paid. So all of a sudden, we've, we've switched it up a little bit. We're only paying for the ones where somebody said implicitly, I want to watch this, because they haven't said, I don't want to watch this. Make sense? Cool. So why is it good when people decide to actually watch your ad. Well, we know YouTube is a lean forward platform anyway. That's what we call it. People are engaged. It's not passive. TV is a passive activity. So you sit on the couch and the TV is on. That's it. You may be watching it, you may not be. The thing about YouTube is that it's a lean forward platform, is that you're actually searching. You're engaged a lot more with what's going on. And we know that people who choose to watch your ads are even more engaged than, uh, than the people who are forced. To, uh, to watch your ads, for example, and it, it stands to reason. So you might say, okay, right, that's all very well and good, and we get that, but you know, I'm still, I still like TV, and I, I still think TV is pretty snazzy, and TV is pretty snazzy. Um, and if we look at TV, for example, and look at some of the, the benefits that it has and the challenges that it has, so what it has, it has sight, sound, and motion, and we saw from the Levi's ad earlier on, it's an extremely powerful thing. It's got broad reach. I mean, can we, we could say, uh, and I don't think many people would argue that everybody has a TV. As, as there's enough TVs out there to cover the people who don't. The challenges that TV has is that reaching the actual target audience is expensive. Um, on the example here, with that Penny Dreadful ad, you see that that's actually a, a, a 60 second ad. So because it's gone five seconds, I can now skip it. But if I didn't skip it, 60 seconds. Can anybody hazard a guess? how much it costs to get a 60 second ad on during Coronation Street. Per ad, now I'll say. It's not quite that. Um, it's about 51,000 pounds per 30 seconds. That's the way it works. It's about 102,000 pounds to get one ad nationwide during Coronation Street. So it is expensive if that's the audience that you want to target. And you're not quite sure who's watching. Who is watching? Just because your ad is on during Coronation Street, you cannot be sure that your target market is watching it. Just because you put your ad on during Top Gear, you cannot be sure that it's a male 18 to 35 watching it. You just, you just can't be. So let's compare YouTube to this. So sight, sound, and motion. It does. That Levi's ad looks as good today on, uh, on YouTube when we play it there as it did when it was on TV before. It's got the broad reach. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, after Google. So Google and then YouTube. Huge, huge. 300 hours of video content uploaded to YouTube every single minute. Mind-boggling amount of, uh, of, of, of information on there and traffic going on there. With YouTube, we have precision targeting. The same level of targeting as AdWords, for example. So you can target on keywords. You can target on interest categories. You can target on affinity categories. You can use all of the same metrics that TV has. But then you can start adding things like gender and age. And we know this information because people are signed into their YouTube accounts. So if you say you want to target males between 18 and 35, we can do a pretty good job of putting your ad in front of males 18 to 35. And you don't necessarily have to run it before Top Gear in order to achieve that. 
you're not quite sure who's watching. That's that end of things, I suppose, is that we have that sort of demographic data. What else do people advertise on with video? Social, a lot of people putting video on social at the minute, and a lot of buzz about that. So what's the benefit of social? Shareable content, absolutely. Uh, like, share, comment, plus one, retweet, whatever it is, absolutely. Sophisticated audience targeting, of course. I like this, I now like this. And you can target me because I like this. I retweet this, this is the kind of thing I'm interested in. The challenges of them is that they're not a video destination. People don't go on a social media site specifically to watch video. They go on to look at photos, catch up with their friends, uh, snoop, whatever it is that they, uh, that they want to do. But they sure as hell don't go to specifically watch the new Rihanna video. For example, they might stumble across it, but it's not a destination. And there's an extremely low ad interaction. So a lot of people scroll through the ads, ads autoplay, it's not a huge amount happening. It's very difficult to say that somebody is engaged other than the fact that they might uh, like, share, retweet, plus one, whatever it is. So let's look at YouTube. Shareable content. Pass it on in an email, share someone the link, instant message them the link, whatever it is, embed it on your website, extremely shareable content. There's a sophisticated audience targeting, as I mentioned before. We've got all the demographic information and we've got interests because we know what these people do when they're not on YouTube. We know what those cookies, what the sites, what sites they've been on, if you like. So we can make a good hazard as to if I've been on a lot of gardening sites, they don't know who I am, but they can say that this cookie, this anonymous user is likely a keen gardener. Very powerful thing for us to be able to target the audience in that way. A video destination, YouTube, all killer, no filler. It's all video, all the time. That's it, that's what people are there for. They're there to watch videos. So your offering isn't in any way out of place. <coughs> and we've got qualified engagement because as we say, only somebody who doesn't skip gets to see the ad in the first place. So the idea that somebody browses through or just ignores your ad, um, I mean, they have the option to tell us they don't wanna see it uh, and that's fine. And we give you those sort of reporting metrics. We can tell you at which point during your ad people tend to skip, for example, because once it appears after five seconds, it's there for the duration. So if you've got a 30 second long ad, we can say, you know what, 20 seconds, people bailed. And you can say, okay, well, I wonder why that is. What is it about my ad copy? So there's a huge kind of advantage to, uh, to having that information. One of the most powerful things, uh, and I'm almost done, uh, is that you get to reinforce the message. So you get to continue the conversation. Um, so we had a, a mention of remarketing uh, earlier on. Uh, during the presentation. Remarketing works with YouTube audiences as well. So, for example, we've got the people who chose to watch your ad. Um, now, as it stands, we've got the people who subscribe to your videos. We've got the, the, the people who watched videos on your site, for example. They're all lists that are available for targeting within AdWords. So you can say, okay, I'd like to put an ad out for this keyword, but I only want to show it to people who have seen one of my videos. <coughs> cast the net a little bit tighter and it, it, it makes an audience extremely pre-qualified when it comes to who you're actually targeting. What we also say is, let's look at the people who didn't skip. So these people who didn't skip, they elected to watch your ad. That's a pretty, pretty good indication that they're interested in what it is that you do. And then that's it. We can find them across YouTube, the Google Display Network, and Google Search as well. So you can say, I want to push an ad to only people who did not skip my video, only people who gave me an indication that they're interested in what it is that I do, what it is that I sell, or what it is that I offer. I want to push an ad to them, and only them. That's possible, and that's it. You deliver a follow-up ad which is tailored to that group. So you tailor it specifically to that group, you tailor it specifically to that video. Whatever it is, if they were watching your how-to video, well then you can target them when they're looking for how-to content, for example. And um, if you know, for example, that somebody has bought something, you can follow up with an ad that says, you know, here's some add-ons. Why not buy another? That kind of thing. And it all works back from these YouTube audiences. So, and this is the last thing that we've got. As I said, when people choose, the commercials become content and advertising by invitation, we feel, is better than advertising by force. So for most brands, about 5% of people account for 80% of the value. You've got your, your whales, uh, and they're the people who engage with you most, buy from you most. You're very fond of your other customers, 
but about five percent of people are the are the real sort of drivers. Um, so we say, let YouTube, oops, let YouTube help you find them, but also let YouTube help them find you, which is probably even a, a more important thing. TrueView is designed for performance, so don't pay for the people who have no interest in your brand. Don't use a scattergun approach and say, okay, well, it doesn't matter if we showed to 50% of people that weren't interested as long as we showed to 50% of people that were, and that's the, the common way that people used to think about it. Only pay for people who are interested. So amplify it by participation. So we've got the social tools that are there, share, follow on viewing, incremental view count. We give you all the reports about this. We say, okay, well, these were how many ads, or how many views on this ad that you paid for. And here's how many you got by people sharing the ad. Here's how many you got by people liking the ad, whatever it is. And then continue the conversation. So link your YouTube and AdWords accounts. It's best practice anyway. Link your YouTube and AdWords accounts and immediately you'll see, without ever advertising on Google, you'll see viewers and subscribers available for retargeting within your audiences. Um, but if you do promote your video and you do use TrueView, you'll start seeing the audiences such as people who didn't skip in there as well. Incidentally, we also have people who did skip. If you want to exclude them elsewhere, you're, uh, you're more than welcome and it's completely possible. So that's me for now. Um, Perfectly happy to chat later if anybody has specific interest in uh, in video. But for now, I think I'll hand uh, I'll hand you over to Ricky. Just on video, uh, in the corner you'll see James there from uh, Talking Edge Studios, who's filming this uh, event for us. Uh, they're one of our partners. We used to they've done our videos and a couple of other customers' uh, videos. If you uh, are looking for someone to produce content for you, uh, what I'll do is I'll send an email out afterwards and you can speak to them very. Uh, inexpensive ways to get video done. You can go into their green studio in St Paul's, get in for an hour, have an auto queue, they'll edit it for you online, send you back kind of online feedback. Uh, you, know, you can have video pretty much done within a week and, and put on an advertise on YouTube. And I think, Stephen, you probably uh, forgot the most important part, whereas it only costs a few P to have a, a view. That is true. Yeah, so, you know, it's li literally one. We, we start off at a bid at, say, 5P and then are able to drop down to 2p and 1p and you're able to get yeah and that's only someone who's watching it for over 30 seconds so it is a, a very powerful channel